Assalamu alaikum my viewers and my students. Uh, today our lecture will be on punctuation. Um, previous lecture we talked about uh, capitalization and today we are going to talk about another important uh, punctuation mark that is comma. Uh, there are different kinds of commas, uh, comma, the listing comma, the joining comma, the gapping comma, and bracketing commas. And uh, there are certain uh, rules about using comma, but remember that uh, uh, we listen from our teachers or from other people that wherever we have uh, to take, uh, to give a pause in writing, uh, we are going to put a comma. Uh, it might be true, but most of the times uh, that idea, that uh, thought can mislead writers, mislead the language users who are using comma. So uh, what we are going to do, we are going to try to discuss different kinds of comma and then their uses, how they are used in different sentences. So let's move to the first one that is called the listing comma. If you see the, uh, if you uh, see the name of this kind of comma, it is listing comma. What does it mean? It means it will be used when we are going to show list. Now the question is what kind of list? So the list which has uh, which has certain words or phrases or sometimes even short complete sentences. Another thing is so how many list of how many words? So there should be at least minimum three words list of three words or you can say list of three items, uh, list of three phrases, list of minimum three sentences, and this number can increase. And uh, the condition is that that list of words, phrases, or sentence should be joined by either and or or. Normally what we do, last sentence, last phrase, last word, before that we will add e either and or or. Uh, I have got uh, three examples. In first example, we can find a list of the three persons. Athos, Authos and Aramis were three friends. So. Arthur's is one, Arthur's is two, and Aramis is three. So there are three words, and all these three words are referring to three persons. And the la before the last one, we have added and, and between first two, we have added comma. So that is called listing comma. And remember, we don't have comma before and because we are using British punctuation. So in American books, you will find comma before and or or, but in British books, you won't find that comma before and or are. Uh, there is certain specific situation, but we are not going to discuss that. Okay, now second example. Here we have short sentences. There are three people and we are talking about those people that they speak different languages. So there is relevance. So. We can call it a list. Asif speaks German, comma, Faisal speaks Arabic, and I speak French, right? So comma between first two sentences and between second and third, there is and. Third, third example, we spent our days watching games, comma, eating food, comma, discussing politics and giving opinion. So there are different phrases. Basically, what it, it will be, we spent our days, we watched games, we ate food, we discussed politics, 
we gave opinion. So we combined all those sentences, short sentences into phrases because all have the same subject. So we finished, we omitted subject and we changed verb, past form of the verb into present form and added ing. We change into phrases, clauses are changed into phrases and then we have separated them with the help of comma. So we spent our days watching games, that is our first phrase, eating food, that is our second phrase, discussing politics is our third phrase and giving opinion is fourth phrase. So in these three examples, what we have learned, we have learned about using listing comma, right? In first sentence, we use comma between, there is a list of words, names of people. In second, we have got sentences. Sentences are short and they are uh, they are relevant because they are talking about the same uh, thing that is speaking languages. Fourth one, we have got phrases in sentence, list of phrases. We spent our days watching games, first phrase, eating food, second phrase, discussing politics is third phrase and giving opinion is fourth phrase. So I hope you have understood listing comma. I repeat it. So where do we use listing comma? Where we have list of words, list of phrases, or list of short sentences. And they are at least, at least, on minimum, minimum they are three. And between uh, second last and last one, we are going to use either and or are. So that was listing comma. Now we move to the next one. Okay, there is another usage of listing comma. That is, uh, see, there are modifiers. What do we call a modifier? A modifier is, it can be adjective, all right? Adverb is also a modifier, but normally adjective modifies a noun. So if you have a list of adjectives, list of modifiers and they are modifying the same noun, the same name. Then you can put commas between or among those modifiers, those adjectives. See, you do not like a provocative, confusing person. So in between provocative and confusing, both provocative person, confusing person, both adjectives are modifying one word that is person. So there is a list of modifiers which are modifying one word, that is, that is person. So we can put comma. But there is another example where we can't put comma because there are modifiers, but they are not modifying the same word, the same noun. You, you gave me an antique ivory box. So, antique and ivory both are not referring to the same word box. That's why we will not put comma between antique and ivory. Okay? Because antique is modifying ivory and ivory is modifying nah, a box. So, both are not modifying one, the same one. That's why we are not going to use comma here. So remember, when you have modifiers, when you have list of modifiers, adjectives you have, and all those adjectives are modifying one word, one noun, we can put commas between the list of those modifiers. But on the other hand, if you have modifiers, but all those modifiers are not, are not modifying one noun or the same noun. We are not going to put comma between those adjectives or modifiers. So you gave me an antique ivory box. So antique is not uh, modifying box. It's modifying ivory and ivory is modifying box. That's why we will not put comma here. Okay. So that was listing comma. We talked about two uses of listing comma, two major uses of listing comma. So if you divide comma between uh, among different kinds, so it will help you uh, learn it and to use it in better way. But practice is the key to your success. If you don't do practice, you cannot learn how to use punctuation marks. Okay.
Now we move to next one that is called the gapping comma, right? The gapping comma is where we are uh, going to use a comma where we have a long sentence and where we have a long sentence and that sentence is that sentence has uh, words which are repeated so what we do when those words are used for the second time what we do we drop them we omit them and we put comma instead of that list of words now see the example some people want to choose their national language on the speech of urban areas comma others uh, sorry col semicolon others comma on the speech of rural areas now see the difference uh, this sentence uh, uh, it, there are two clauses right and they are separated by uh, semicolon so in second uh, clause there would be the same uh, same sentence others want to choose their national language on the speech of urban areas so want to choose their national language is going to be repeated again going to be repeated so what we have done instead of using instead of writing this whole uh, list of words want to choose their national language what we have done we have omitted those words and we have put comma there right so that was the second kind right now so till now we have done two kinds number one was a listing uh, listing comma and the second one was gapping comma and now we have the joining comma what is the joining comma the word the name is telling you what is joining comma joining comma is basically going to join two independent clauses and I hope that everyone knows what are two independent clauses independent clauses are which can give you meaning without help of any other clause and the independent clause is also called a simple sentence so when you combine two simple sentences into one compound sentence when we transform two simple sentences two independent clauses into one compound sentence we are going to use seven any one of the seven coordinating conjunctions which you might have heard with the name fanboys so there are seven conjunctions which are used to join two independent clauses or two simple sentences and whenever you put these seven any one of these seven conjunctions you will put comma before that conjunction it is must so what are those conjunctions these are and but or so yet for and nor and even uh, while can also be used for but right so uh, I have given you one example there was there were there was traffic jam on the road uh, there is a mistake but uh, it's uh, error is a uh, type of error so uh, avoid were it is not were so it will be there was let me cut it yes so technology helps you where you commit certain mistake right so now it's fine so there was traffic jam on the road this is one independent clause another independent clause is I could not attend the meeting so one clause is cause and the other one is a fact so we are going to combine them with the help of coordinating conjunction so and we are going to put comma before that here I'm not going to discuss the uses of coordinating conjunction inshallah uh, uh, by the grace of God we are going to 
uh, deliver a lecture on uh, coordinating conjunctions too. But first, inshallah, we will uh, complete this punctuation uh, series. So this is joining comma. All right. So till now we have done three kinds. Number one was uh, listing comma. Then we talked about uh, 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 talked about uh, uh, gapping comma, and then we talked about joining comma. Last one. Now, last one is bracketing commas. Why? Because bracketing commas are used in pair. Bracketing commas are used in pair, right? Bracketing commas can come in the middle. They can come in the uh, start. They can come in the end too. But when they come in the middle, they will come, they will be used in pair. In the beginning, obviously, there will be one comma, and at the end, it will be also one comma. The thing is where we are going to use these bracketing commas? The answer is when we mark off the weak interruption of a sentence. When we point out the weak interruption in a sentence. What is weak interruption, by the way? Weak interruption is that part of a sentence, if we omit that part of sentence, either it can be word, it can be phrase. If we omit it, the flow of sentence will not be broken. Your sentence will be smooth. There will be no interruption. There will be no breakage, right? So that is weak interruption. Now see the example, it will be, it will make your idea clear. The doctors, comma, no doubt, comma, are in real danger. So what is the sentence? The doctors are in real danger. If I skip, no doubt, there will be no difference, right? Sentence will move smoothly. There will be smooth sentence. So no doubt is weak interruption. It is used here just to give some sort of emphasis, right? So that's why we have added two uh, commas, bracketing commas. So uh, a second uh, usage is that we also, we can also mark off the non-defining relative clause. Now it's a matter of grammar. If you have knowledge about grammar, it will be easier for you. But if you are not, uh, if you are beginner, definitely it will cause problem for you. But uh, here I think that my students, they have certain uh, knowledge, certain background. Uh, of uh, clauses. So see relative clause, basically they start with WH, like who, like what, like which, or sometimes with that. There are two, what relative clause does, it modifies, it defines an antecedent. It can be a noun, it can be a pronoun, All right? Like in, uh, in the example, Shahid Afridi is an antecedent. It is a noun. So it is defined by a relative clause, right? So there are two conditions. If one, either your relative clause is going to define your antecedent. When it defines, it is called defining clause. And sometimes it does not define, rather it gives some extra information, right? If that you don't have that information, it will not create any difference. So non-defining clause that is called a non-defining clause. So in this example, Shahid Afridi comma who plays for Multan Sultans comma has been a great all rounder. So this who plays for Multan Sultans. It is uh, marked off with the help of two commas. So these are bracketing commas. If you skip this who plays for Multan Sultan, Shahid Afridi has been a great all-rounder. Still, the meaning is clear, all right? So this who plays for Multan Sultan is not defining Shahid Afridi. Rather, it is giving you some extra information. If you don't give this information, still, Shahid Afridi will be a renowned person, right? So the next point, we move to the next point. That is our last point. So when subordinating clause comes at the beginning, 
So if you have knowledge about subordinating clauses, you can make it easier. See, there are subordinating clauses. There are almost 14 in number, major for, like because, since, as, before, after, till, then although, though, uh, and then that, uh, if, unless, these uh, are all uh, subordinating conjunctions. So when you have one independent clause and the other clause is dependent clause, you use a subordinating conjunction before dependent clause. And you can move dependent clause uh, on the second position as well on the first position. When you start the sentence with subordinating clause, so your subordinating conjunction will come in the beginning in this sentence, since is subordinating conjunction. So subordinating clause has come at the beginning. So since I was not present, comma, I do not know what happened. So this one comma, because it's in the it's at the beginning, that's why we have one comma. Otherwise we would have two commas, all right? So that is all about bracketing commas. And uh, uh, let me add you one more thing. That is, uh, uh, we also use, uh, uh, bracketing comma and uh, at another point that is called noun in a position when you have two parallel nouns two different words two different nouns are referring to same entity we can bring them both together and we can separate them with the help of bracketing comma like Islamabad comma capital of Pakistan comma is a beautiful city. So Islamabad and capital of Pakistan are both noun in opposition, right? We will also inshallah discuss noun in opposition separately. So for today, uh, it's enough. And I hope you uh, have enjoyed my lecture and uh, it will inshallah help you improve your uh, knowledge about usage of commas. And um, God may help you and have a good day. Uh, Allah Hafiz. Thank you.